The years pass by, but one graphic design decision remains. It's 2016, presidential campaign, the largest platform, the highest stakes. And here's Jeb Bush, brother son to George Walker War Criminal Volume 1 and 2, putting a goddamn exclamation point on his campaign logo. Okay, yeah, your point? Innocent enough. But since that day that some graphic designer decided to chug a yerba mate and bullshit their way through a half hour slide on design philosophy, it's been burrowed deep, deep into my hyperfixated psyche, constantly digging its way to the surface, popping out and yelling, it makes me so stupidly happy that somebody sent that out into the world with a straight face. Somebody slapped that big ass exclamation point next to Jeb and put it out into the race for possibly the most powerful position in the world. Okay, yeah, it's fun to say, but I think it's more than that. I think in this small, specific detail you'll find a metaphor for the entire arc of Jeb Bush himself. The man who assumed excitement. Presidential campaigns are high-staked fever dreams. They're focus grouped to death by overconfident consultants, money's flowing like booze through an all-inclusive cruise ship, and there are ripping lines of dark money rolled through Lockheed Martin-sponsored $100 bills. And in 2016, a campaign for former Florida Governor Jeb Bush figured he was next in line for the throne. The third Bush is the charm. Someone dust off the Mission Accomplished banner and consider those offshore drilling permits signed, sealed, and delivered. And it seems foolproof. Until reality hits the high and you realize the face of policy wong confidence is this meek, sheepish guy that at times you'd almost feel bad for if you ignored everything else. But back to graphic design, pretty much every political logo is the same. Especially conservatives trying to show that things aren't going to change. They'll toss the candidate's name with some alternating version of red, white, and blue and call it a day. Done. Print it out on the yard sign and send the local poli sci majors lawn hunting through swing districts. But Jeb isn't just a chip off the old former CIA director father's block. No, no, no. He hit the streets with a logo that is now infamous in probably my own mind only. His name with a big ass bold exclamation point. But sure, I can see where you're coming from. I mean, it's not that left of center. It's not vermin supreme or Brazilian political advertising. And I think it would have just fallen to the wayside if it wasn't immediately followed by what came next. Utter domination. Oh, sorry, wrong timeline. No, it was an absolute smackdown. A nationally televised, sad, slow-burning dumpster fire. Jeb got batted around every debate, rally, and press appearance like a dead mouse your cat's kind of bored with. His campaign was honestly a pretty pathetic attempt at coasting to a nomination that quickly nosedived into a disastrous defeat. A defeat to a dude that, let's not forget, was the host of The Celebrity Apprentice. It was assumed excitement meeting a tidal wave of indifference. And in the aftermath, this exclamation point just seemed to be the perfect cherry on top. It stood there, in big, bold type, laughing at the ridiculousness of the whole affair. With new context, to me it became this emblem that perfectly captured that sick justice of watching power flailing. Who knows exactly what happened in his campaign? Maybe it was sequel fatigue. He represented the 28th Marvel movie in a two-year window, and even the promoter's hearts weren't in it. Doesn't really matter now. But I keep going back to that assumed excitement that cracks me Please up. Please clap. It's putting the exclamation mark as this explicit thing, rather than something earned. This artificial enthusiasm. Here's a third major Bush family member on the scene. Two others can dive their way to the top, so why shouldn't he? People will be excited, it's not even a question, just put it there from the get-go. Hey, here's even some excitement in Spanish while we're at it. It's absurd, it's stupid, it's pointless. It's what graphic design does at its best, it captures the essence of the thing it stands for. It gives me the energy of a bad toupee. It's bold, it stands out, and it's not fooling anyone. But the fact that the people behind it think it's working is so absurd, it's kind of funny. And then there's the fact that it's just silly to say, Jeb, 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 Jeb. It feels like it's lampooning him. It, it makes his name seem like a cartoon punchline. It's like a brother to Homer Simpson's dope. It's absurd. It's like saying shucks or dang nabbit with sincerity. Maybe it was once folksy, but Looney Tunes ad-libs aren't something I'd give the nuclear codes to. And I also think it's important as I roast Jeb's name to point out it's not actually his name. It's a nickname that's actually an acronym for John Ellis Bush, which also means saying Jeb Bush is kind of redundant. It's like saying ATM machine or pin number. I say this to point out it's not like he has no control on how he brands himself. This is essentially a stage name. 
Maybe it's to endear himself to voters or subtly separate from his familial connection without entirely ditching it. But either way, I'm risking a branding choice. And this video is about branding identity choices and how design relates to perception and reality. Like IHOP's IHOP maneuver. And branding choices make a difference in politics. If Trump came onto the scene referring to himself as Donnie J, people would react differently. And with the exclamation point, his campaign is drawing attention straight to Jeb. And for me, that means drawing attention to the fact that voting for him would mean we'd spend four years hearing a serious newscast about this name that sounds like what your grandma calls dancing e-cards with your face on them. I mean, that almost works in like an ironic way, but imagine waking up every morning to see the course of human events being shaped by Jeb. President Jeb declares war. President Jeb takes flack from the UN General Council. President Jeb survives assassination attempt from previously pardoned Turkey, seeking revenge. Either way, I'm fine with punching up. In a world where so much power is concentrated at the top, where citizens have less and less control over our collective direction, where unelected power puts its thumbs on the scales of our country's future, there's something so satisfying about watching a bush become a laughingstock. Where for a moment, we refuse to even take them seriously. And this is not about the grander story of 2016. This isn't about how the rest of the election went. It's a side story about watching collective indifference take the winds out of the sails of the family that ran the country for 12 years as they become the butt of the joke. And that's what the exclamation point is to me now. It's pointing and laughing as they walk away with their tail between their legs, mocking the arrogance of thinking they could force another one of their clan down our throats. Maybe this is all a stretch. In all actuality, it might just be fun to say Jeb. But I'm drawn to absurdity. And maybe in absurdity, there's an ounce of meaning. Who fucking knows? So sure, Jeb Bush's campaign might have been a colossal waste of money that helped no one, could have been entirely avoided, and dragged down his family's clout amongst the only people they care about. The expensive and least successful presidential campaigns in American history. But I know deep down, Jeb knows it was worth the hundreds of millions of dollars of corporate fundraising down the drain just to make one niche content creator slash video essayist wannabe happy for a few hours at his own expense. And for that, I say with my whole heart, please clap.